Continuing news out of Ukraine, uh, standing before a crowd of tens of thousands in Independence Square, the uh, civic uprising that led to the ousting of President Viktor Yanukovych now saw lawmakers temporarily controlling Ukraine, announcing an interim government. This happened last night, led by Arseniy Yatsenyuk. And uh, uh, Yatsenyuk Yatsenyuk is a uh, veteran public official. And immediately there were both cheers and jeers from the crowd as this interim government was announced. And simultaneously in the Crimean Peninsula of Ukraine, which is on the northern coast of the Black Sea, masked men with guns seized control of some government buildings in the capital of the Crimea region today. They barricaded themselves inside. They raised the Russian flag after what are being described as mysterious overnight raids, which appeared to be the work of some militant Russian nationalists who want the volatile Black Sea region ruled from Moscow rather than from within Ukraine. Police officers sealed off access to the buildings. They said they have no idea who's behind these assaults. And this is further escalating tensions. I think that there are now multiple forces at play which may officially and extra officially keep Ukraine, at least from a public perspective, from be appearing to be closely more closely aligned with the European Union. We have the kind of active forces of Vladimir Putin and the Russian government who obviously prefer closer alignment with Russia than with the European Union. And then now we see Russian gunmen physically seizing buildings. We have not that much information yet about who officially they're connected to. This is going to be a difficult period for Ukraine. And I, it's, it's always interesting how in the lead up to the ousting <laughs> of an official or, or of the government or of whoever it may be, you see more of like a, oh, as soon as we get whoever's in power out, things are going to go really, really well. And I'm not blaming anyone for that short sighted view, because when you want whoever's in power out, you you of course think things will be better as soon as they're out. But as we've seen in many countries, there is often an interim period that is very troubling. Yeah, I uh, things are going to be pretty chaotic for a little while, I think. But uh, I'm sure people breathe a sigh of relief when Yanukovych was uh, was booted. And from a governmental standpoint, it's good to hear that they have someone uh, appointed to be uh, an interim leader. Um, but the things are certainly not going to clear up for a while. No, they're not. And now the tension between Russia and the U.S. is ramping up. And what, to be honest, is feeling a little bit reminiscent in terms of the, the language and the dynamic uh, uh, of the Cold War. The U.S. warned Russia that it would be a, quote, grave mistake to intervene militarily in Ukraine. Now, this was, of course, as we reported yesterday, that the Kremlin ordered 150,000 troops to test combat readiness. It just so happens right over the Ukrainian border into Russia. And Secretary of State John Kerry raised the issue. He said that uh, there would be um, uh, saying that 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 this is not a good direction to be going in, that Vladimir Putin should not move in militarily to to Ukraine. At the same time, Russia, uh, understandably, doesn't like being told what to do by the United States, saying that the, the West must stop making provocative statements on Ukraine. This is feeling very Cold War like once again, the dynamic between the US and Russia. And maybe it's fitting that yesterday, season two of the FX series, The Americans, which is like a Cold War spy drama, started. And the the atmosphere in that show in 1980s Cold War era is is starting to feel a little bit like what's developing now between the US and Russia. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But overall, uh, I do think it's a, maybe not a grave mistake for Russia to intervene, although uh, a pretty dumb one. I think it would be an even bigger mistake for the U.S. to intervene, even just on a, on the level that we just did. I, I think we need to stay out of this completely. Yeah, well, I think you're right in that from Russia's point of view, why wouldn't they try to get involved here? Anywhere that they can wield influence or power is seen as a positive thing. So I'm not faulting Russia for wanting to get involved. However, I don't think that's what's in the long term interest of Ukraine, particularly when they have the real possibility of closer alignment with Western European Union forces.